All right, welcome. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on with uh, the workout problems. So we're gonna start with, uh, in this part of the video, with chapter 11, problem three. So we only have one problem in chapter 11 that we're gonna do. This is uh, specifically focused in on uh, competitive firms in the long run. Okay, so problem three in the back of chapter 11. So it says here there are 300 purely competitive farms in the local dairy market. Of the 300 dairy farms, 298 have a cost structure that generates profits of $24 for every 300 invested. So what is their percentage rate of return? So this is this is pretty easy. So the the percentage rate of return basically is just going to be our $24, which is the return divided by the initial investment. Okay? At, which is going to be 8%. That's that's how we get our uh, rate of return. So uh, profits divided by uh, investment and then we go on here and it says two, the other two dairies, so we've got 298 out of 300, uh, make 8%. And now we've got to calculate the other two dairies, right? So the other two dairies have a cost structure that generates profits of 22 for every 200. So we're going to do the same uh, thing to find out the return, right? So it's 22 divided by 200. So in this case, uh, the return is actually going to be... 11%, okay? So that's the percentage rate of return is 11%. So now, so so we have, so we have 298 firms that are making uh, 8% return on their investment. And then we have two firms over here that are making 11% return on their investment. So it says, assuming that the normal rate of uh, profit in the economy is 10%, will there be entry or exit? So, and, that, and that's pretty, that's pretty easy, right? So we've got the normal market over here making uh, 10%. And so all of these 298 are going to say, you know what, we need to reinvest over here uh, to, to get two more percent, right? Return on our, our uh, investment. So we're definitely going to have exit, right? So we're going to have exit in in the industry. Uh, and then the the, and the next one here says, will the change in the number of firms affect the two that earn uh, $22 for every 200 invested? So, so the exit will not, right? So they're not going to exit. The exit will not affect the two dairies that are earning two, uh, 11%. Uh, because they're earning above normal returns. Uh, so they don't have any incentive to exit. Okay, so is it going to affect them? No, but in the long run, so here let's talk about this next one here as it continues. So what will be the rate of return earned for most firms in the industry in the long run? So here we have these two firms that uh, are making 11%, right? And uh, why are they making 11%? Well, that's a good that's a good question. Maybe they're maybe they have a newer uh, dairy barn. Maybe they have better feed for their for their uh, cows. Maybe they have a new another uh, type of um, just way to to milk their cows. Uh, who knows? Who knows what it is? They've got something though that's allowing them to get a better return than everybody else. But, but what will happen is, in the long run, uh, firms are going to be getting out, right? So let's say these two firms remain. They're making 11%. They're supplying all the milk. What about all these people over here that are making 10%? What are they going to be looking at? They're going to be saying, okay, look over here at, at the dairy industry. We can be making more money if we go and uh, invest in dairies. So there's going to be entry eventually, right? And not only will there be entry, but there will be entry, and they are going to try to match what these two uh, dairy farms are doing. Okay, so that's what they're going to do. So, what will be the rate of return earned for most firms in the industry in the long run? In the long run, this is what's going to happen: is 
as uh, people exit, okay, so and enter, the, in the long run, the return will be the market rate. So it's going to drive the, the amount that they're able to make down. Okay, and that's, that's just a matter of price and, and quantity, right? The price of milk and the quantity of milk is going to go towards the market rate, the market return, normal market return. And the, the next one down here is this. If firms can copy each other's technology, if they can, which in the purely competitive uh, market we say yes, they can. Everybody has the same advantage. Will the rate return eventually be earned by all firms? It's going to be 10%. Okay. Okay, so that's what it's going to be. And, um, and really it's going to be because all the other firms are going to eventually adopt the good practices of the 11 percenters is kind of the way it's going to be. So it's going to drive profits down. Okay, so that's chapter 11. Now we're moving on to chapter uh, 12. Okay, so chapter 12, we're going to, we're doing a shift here, right? So we, we're going from purely competitive to pure monopolies. Okay, so that's what chapter 12 is all about is pure monopolies. So we're going to be looking at a, at uh, monopoly power, how monopolies are formed a little bit with this little problem. So we're assuming here at the, at the beginning here, we're assuming that the most efficient production technology available for making vitamin pills has the cost structure given in the following table. So this is the table for making vitamin pills. Note that output is measured in the number of bottles of vitamins per day. Okay, and that cost include a normal profit. Okay, so that's part of the cost. So we're really what we're looking at here, any profit above and beyond is an economic profit. That's just part of our um, vocabulary that we've, we've talked about before. Okay, so now we're gonna get our first question. It says, what is the average total cost per unit for each level of output listed on the, in the table? Average total cost. So what is average total cost? Average total cost equals our total cost, right, divided by our output. That's what average total cost is. So we're gonna take our output here and we're gonna divide our total cost, okay, in every situation with each of these, right? So we're gonna divide, divide by uh, 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, and 100,000, right? Each row we're going to go ahead and do that and then uh, what we're going to come up with here is the average cost uh, per bottle is four dollars so here's our average total cost column we're going to maybe make this it's going to be four dollars here okay at 25,000 bottles at 50,000 bottles it'll be three dollars at uh, 75,000 bottles, it's gonna be $2.50. And then at uh, 100,000 bottles, it's gonna be $2.76. So is this a decreasing cost industry? Okay, so meaning as the production goes up, does does our cost, does our average total cost continue to go down? And the, and the answer is no. It's, it's going like this. Average total cost is looking like this. So it's not totally, it's not totally a uh, decreasing cost industry that because of this right here, right? This 276, so we're going back up, right? This is an increase. Okay, so it's not just a de decreasing cost industry. And that's a no. Is it a decreasing cost industry? No. Uh, suppose that the market price for a bottle of vitamins is two dollars and fifty cents, and that the price, uh, and that price, uh, the price, the total market quantity demanded is seventy-five uh, million. Okay. Seventy-five million. How many firms will there be in this industry? So here is the price, right? 
So at, at that price, uh, so that's, and that is the market price, okay? So if the market price is 250, then we're going to have our, our average total cost. So we're, we're going to be at 75,000 right here per firm. That's per firm. So how many firms will that be? Well, it's going to be our 75 million for the total industry divided by our 75,000. Okay. So how many firms is that? That is uh, 1,000 firms okay, that are going to be in the industry. So the next one, uh, the, suppose that instead the market quantity demanded at the price of 250 is 75,000. Uh, how many firms? Well, the output 75,000. There's only room for one firm now. So now, now we're supposed to review our answers for parts B, C, and D. Uh, does the level of demand determine this industry's market structure? Okay, and the level of demand is shown here by the 75 million and the 75,000, right? Um, all of these items, and, and sure enough, it does, right? With this demand, we have a monopoly, right? With this demand, we have more of a, maybe a computer competition, maybe more competitive anyways, right? And so the answer is yes. The answer is yes on that. And so that's the end of uh, chapter 12, uh, workout problems. So again, you know, take a look at these, make sure you understand kind of how they're done and, um, what the uh, what the answers are and if you have any questions we'll talk about that feel free to send me an email or call me you know definitely if you have a question and so we'll talk to you later have a good day